This wasn't even supposed to be a video. This was supposed to be just a straightforward speaker swap, and it turned into a nightmare. Because, of course it did. This is the interior of my 2003 BMW E46 330i. It should look pretty familiar to anyone who's been watching for a little while. This has the Harman Kardon stereo system. Neat logo, but it's 20 years old and three, 260,000 miles worth of playing tunes. And after that much time, it has started to sound a little sad. So there are three options to replacing it. One used Harman Kardon stuff out of a junkyard, or salvage yard, or eBay. Two, Bav Sounds uh, plug-and-play speaker upgrade, which is about $600. Three, random stuff from Parts Express. I went with the third option, because uh, the Harman Kardon system uses weird stuff, like three-ohm speakers. And uh, so I bought the stuff off Park Parts Express and a couple things off Amazon. It's about $160. Got uh, new tweeters that are in there. You can see my wonderful wiring job. Got uh, these mid-rangers, which are installed. They're just kind of pressed in there. It's it's real fun installing them into this uh, holder here. And then we have the woofers. These door woofers. So first of all, installing those tweeters is a nightmare. Uh, I had to take it back out. They just just getting them to fit in in the space provided is an absolute mess. So I had to take the door back apart and fiddle with it a bit more. And I noticed first of all, uh, at some point we forgot to take this screw out and absolutely destroyed the mount on my door. So uh, good job, me. My cube trim disintegrated. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's aluminum glued onto a plastic backing and the glue failed, so that was annoying. A whole bunch of these clips somehow got destroyed, and I'm pretty sure a lot of these are new. Or maybe it's just these that are new, I'm not sure. But a whole bunch of clips got destroyed, so that was annoying, and then I finally put it back together after fixing the tweeter, and I heard a rattling. And it was from the area of this woofer. Nice little aluminum comb woofer though, like look at that thing, it's kind of nice looking. What's not nice? is that the magnet fell off the back. And you can see it's kind of crooked now because I tried to glue it back on, but the old glue kept it from going back on correctly. So this thing is toast, like immediately. Um, so I had to get a new one. And fortunately, Parts Express came through and they just sent me a new one uh, instantly. So now I gotta put it back in. I went to the junkyard, uh, got some clips from the junkyard because, you know, why not? So we're gonna put the clips in the door panel back on and hopefully that'll be okay then we're gonna take this car and we're going to take it to a buddy of mine who's really good at doing surface mount soldering and we're gonna fix the ECU and the key fob hopefully with any luck uh, the key fob I've I'm going to switch the buttons from another key fob uh, to hopefully fix my lock and unlock issues and then on the DME itself my check engine light that I have right now is for is a P2227 which is for the barometric pressure switch or sensor. Now it doesn't read too far off. I can scan it with my diagnostic tablet and see that yeah, it's about 10% off. It's reading the equivalent of eight, uh, a couple hundred feet different in altitude than normal, but I'm still getting codes for it every now and then, so I'm just going to replace it. And it's soldered inside the ECU itself, so my buddy's gonna take care of that. Uh, one nice thing to come of all this is I went to the junkyard and there is a uh, 3 Series, a 325i, that had all of these tools still in the toolkit. And if we look, this should pretty much complete my toolkit. And also, this is a way nicer tow hook. So out goes this one. There we go. Uh, let's see. Are these nicer? They sure look it, so my nicer... This one's weirdly shiny. It's like it's been used a bunch. Don't want people to think that you actually use the tools in your BMW, because then they'll think it's unreliable or something. And I've got the BMW. Does it actually say BMW on here? It says West Germany. West Germany? Surely this was designed uh, <laughs> at least a little bit of time after the Berlin Wall fell. Um, and there we go. 
Okay, all I'm missing is this thing, and I'm not entirely sure what that is. And this is where the wheel lock would go, but I don't have wheel locks. So now I have almost my entire OEM BMW toolkit looking resplendent. Just a little bit of dirt right there. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Let's go put the speaker back together. Oh okay, yeah, I suppose I should mention the tweeter and the woofer are Dayton Audio, and that is uh, peerless. And I gotta say props to um, Parts Express for their pretty great customer support. I just sent them a picture and they said, okay, we'll send you a new one. And then I had an invoice and then I got it. Can't argue with that. I don't know if they'll be that nice in all situations, but hey. Now putting this in is kind of strange. Uh, so you've got gaskets and you've got this adapter ring and the ad adapter ring has to go with these protrusions facing down, but then you've got these boys that can't like fleshly meet against the speaker. So you have to mount the speaker onto the cone with the heads of the fasteners facing forward and then mount the whole assembly into the door panel. And it does kind of bother me that BMW does, does this, the speakers mounted to the door panel instead of, you know, the metal. At least on my insight, the speakers are mounted to the door panel, but then there's three screws right here, effectively hard mounting it to the door. This is kind of silly in my opinion, but... Okay, the speaker is mounted in the adapter ring, so now it just goes right in there. And I had to buy some longer screws to go through here, and then it's all good. And I forgot to mention why on earth I'm doing all this in the first place. This isn't just because I wanted an upgrade. Both of my mids were completely blown, and that tweeter over there was non-functional. I put a meter on it, and it was a completely open circuit, so that tweeter was hosed. And yes, I did do a subwoofer before I even had functioning door speakers, because that's just the way that I am. Uh, here's a picture of what the mids look like. Pretty bad. <laughs> Let's get this tightened down. As you can see here, I just made a little pigtail by desoldering the pigtail off of the stock mid, but then for the uh, woofer, I just went ahead with, um, well, the factory wiring and just cut and crimped some connectors. It works. Only problem is, well, I guess it really isn't a problem. It, j it just works. <laughs> Nothing more to it. <laughs> Nothing's ever simple. I put it all back together, and none of my front channel speakers worked at all. So I took the door panel back off. Didn't break any clips this time. And then I unplugged all the speakers. Hey, my front channel worked again when I turned the car on. So then I started plugging speakers back in, and they all work. I, I have no idea what its problem was, <laughs> but uh, now they're working. My only complaint though, and it's a pretty big one, the tweeters are wildly overbearing. Like at higher, at lower volumes, they sound okay. At higher volumes, they are ear piercing in a very bad way. They sound like they're being overdriven. Not sure what the solution is. I might just try and find some Harman Kardon tweeters and just put those back in there, but let's go see if we can get my DME taken care of and some soldering things. Okay, well the debacle with the speakers is finally resolved and they're great in the BMW, but it is throwing a check engine light and this here is the culprit. This is the barometric pressure sensor. I've been getting a P2227, which means that this little guy has gone bad. And let me show you uh, what it looks like. There it is. Thumb for scale. It's very small. It's soldered onto the DME itself, which means that in order to get this replaced, the DME has to come out. So let's out the DME from the car, fortunately. It's extremely st straightforward, talking less so. All we need is a bit driver and some bits. There he is, officer. That man right there, T25, and we are ready to party. And it's just a few screws. Four screws later, how's your uncle? There we go. That's the fella. Ha ha, it's out. There we go. And you can see the uh, processor and what appears to be uh, 
I don't know, flash memory? It's made by AMD, so probably not, but who knows. And let's see, looks like the actual sensor. There it is, on this much more populated side of the board. That's our guy. Whole bunch of MOSFETs. Whole bunch of other stuff going on in here. None of which I particularly have time nor care to explain right now. Let's go get this to my buddy and get the new guy soldered in. Since replacing the barometric pressure sensor in the DME, I've been driving the car for about a week and no more barometric pressure sensor errors. Turns out replacing the bad sensor fixes errors about the bad sensor. However, I did get a code for a mass airflow sensor. So I bought a new one. They're not cheap. I bought OEM because of course I did. And uh, I think the USPS driver that delivered them today was just kind of done with my shit. <laughs> These are have clearly just kind of been thrown. Um, uh, but yes, straight from FCP Euro, lots of OEM parts. This is actually a, uh, a different different video, but I believe this is my mass airflow sensor, $230, which is why I did all this other stuff before buying this, because I'd feel pretty stupid if I spent all this money and it turned out the issue was not the mass airflow sensor. But this, this box should fix the very last of the check engine light issues that this car has, which means it is finally fixed. Now, of course, it still has some other stuff to do, which is in that box. Once we install the stuff in that box, then the car will actually be, everything that I knew that was wrong with it when I got it will finally be fixed, mechanically speaking. This finishes the last of the electrical issues, that will finish up the last of the mechanical issues, and then it's just um, contending with the fact that it is a quarter million mile BMW, and the entirety of the interior and bodywork is absolute junk but at least it'll drive and get me where I need to go after two years and $9,000. <laughs> BMW ownership's a trip, guys. Anyway, let's uh, do the needful and throw this thing in the car, if I can pick it up. Oh my God, it's like a claw machine. There we go. Evolution may have given us opposable thumbs, doesn't mean it made me any good at using them. Man, does that new valve cover look good or what? Phew. Um, but there we go. One new OE Luftmesser. Luft, 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 Luftmesser. Luft, I don't know. I probably have a better chance of pronouncing that one. But my goodness gracious, she's a shiny boy. There we go. There it is in place, feeling refreshed in its lane, flourishing. I'm going to keep the old one because spare parts. These for the uh, 330i's are far far more expensive than the mass airflow sensors for the uh, less uh, the inferior smaller engines. And of course sensors on any car are something that you always want to go OE or with a trusted brand. This is not something that you want to cheap out on and get a knockoff part because the only way the engine knows what is happening inside there is the sensor. So if you buy a new sensor and it's reading off your engine's just gonna roll with it, or if it's checking it against another sensor, it's gonna start throwing a bunch more codes, and you might be inclined to think, oh, well, I just replaced that sensor, so it's not that, it must be these other sensors. And then you're chasing your tail for the next five years, trying to figure out why your car doesn't run right. Or even worse, it leans out and burns a hole in a piston, a valve, something of that nature. So don't cheap out on your sensors, especially the mass airflow sensor and the O2 sensors always get quality brands, Bosch, video continental uh uh the the ones that honda used that i can't remember the name of uh it, but at any rate <laughs> quick tangent but that's why it's worth spending 225 dollars on a good sensor let's go start this thing up I didn't expect that, it actually idles smoother. So the old one was reading off by a little bit, uh, we could tell, and huge thank you by the way to the members of uh, E46 Fanatics. They spent hours going through data logs with me to try and figure out exactly what's wrong with this computer. You know, we ended up with a vacuum leak, which I fixed with a valve cover, and my mass airflow sensor was reporting a little bit low. So now my mass airflow sensor should be reporting correctly and it should be able to tell exactly how much air is going to the engine and man, that thing idles. 
can't feel it running. That's how a BMW straight six should be. So now I'm gonna take this and go run and get some sushi, because I really like sushi. Thanks for watching.